it's on. Hey, we online. Welcome back to the Shimmy Show, everybody. Hi. Today's topic is get in where you fit in. Um, it's actually the uh, the title of one of my favorite rap albums by Too Short. I think it came out in '93. Go buy that shit. Get in where you fit in. Um, I want to take it literally and apply it to uh, life and travels and just some of the personal observations I've like been able to. Uh, observe with people, you know, since I kind of work off the internet and wherever I go, I don't really have anywhere to clock into. So I have the luxury of being able to like, uh, observe people, uh, overanalyze people and do social experiments, right? It's kind of cool. You know, I do this all the fucking time. It's pretty fucking awesome, right? You know, I guess you guys, you could do this in your office or school too, but I mean, I probably have way more quote unquote I wouldn't say disposable time, but flexible time than the average person, right? So um, I'm here in Columbia, still here, you know, is what it is. It's all right. And uh, I wanted to just point out some observations I've made by talking to a couple people over the last couple weeks here, right? About just society in general. And this mostly applies to um, relationships and dating or whatever. Some things that I actually suck at, but I have a lot of experience at, so... I think it's a good idea to listen to people who have had a lot of failures before if you're trying to be successful in whatever you're endeavoring to do, okay? Now, I personally don't have a girlfriend, at least not in this country. You know, there's, I have a couple people I'm like interested in and a couple people I hang out with and a couple people I, okay, well, fuck it. Okay, I have a couple, I have a few girlfriends, but none of them live nearby me. They're on other continents, <laughs> okay? I like Southeast Asia, all right? But I'm not going back there for a minute. So it is what it is. And by the way, I think I'm one of those people that I believe it is possible to love multiple people. I don't know who puts this whole uh, one man, one woman concept together, but I think that's bullshit. I mean, I don't, I don't think it's possible to uh, have relationships or infinite relationships because our mind is only so finite and you can only juggle so many people's you know what I'm saying? I would say up to three, four, or five people. If you go beyond that, you're really, really taxing your brain. And why would you want to do that to yourself? You know what I'm saying? So, um, but regardless, uh, I, I don't, I don't live with a girl. Okay, I live alone. I travel alone, generally speaking. And uh, you know, unless I want to change that situation up, so I have time. And it feels like, uh, you know, for a guy that's been married before, I've been married for about seven years before previously. It, when you're single and you've been married before or have been in a long-term relationship before and you get out of it, um, it feels like you have like an extra 12 hours in a day or whatever, you know? You can, um, god damn, I have so much more free time now to exercise and focus on my diet and personal health and fitness goals and I'm making progress and I'm getting work done and I'm going to more countries left and right and left and right and I'm just learning all the whole while absorbing knowledge, right? Um, when you're when you're locked down and cohabitating with someone, that's not always possible, unless your partner is doing the same shit too, and you help each other or supplement each other or whatever. So uh, anyway, that little rant aside, that's my little uh, that's my resume or whatever. So I would always also say you should. <sighs> it's not a good idea to take advice about relationships, dating, or marriage from someone that's never done it before. Me, I've done all of the above before. Um, you can check my resume, look at my other movies, look at my YouTube channel, and I'm pretty official. Okay, it's the numbers. I don't even want to discuss them, but if you just go and Google me, you will see they're ridiculous. Not even triple digits. We're like in the four-digit range, possibly five-digit range, maybe. I don't know, but definitely the four-digit range as far as girls' relationships and uh, whatever go. Okay. And for the record, I'm 39 years old, right? What the fuck's going on? Okay, I got to get back to uh, this phone thing in a minute here. But anyway, let me uh, go ahead and go on with the show here. Uh, get in with get in where you fit in. As Too Short says on the song, you got to get right in where you belong. Find the right niche, then write the song. Something like that, right? Um, just YouTube, it's a good song or whatever. So uh, I bring that up because I'm in Colombia here, right? I have spoken with a couple guys over the last couple weeks, and they're, they're telling me something along the lines that they tend to fetishize or they want, particularly a white, particularly a blonde girl here, um, like foreigner or something to that effect. 
And I listen to the ways they talk about them and the way they like glorify and idolize them like they are this like rare creature or some shit on the planet. And I'm just like, white girls? Like, no, blonde. Some people are arguing like blonde and white are two different things. I don't fucking know. It. It's all, to a nigga like me, it's all the same. I don't care. I don't really particularly care for white, blonde, black, this, that, the other girls, I don't give a fuck. And maybe that's why, I don't know, I, I tend to like hang out with them more. Or maybe they just kind of come towards me more more often than the average guy here, I guess. I don't, I don't fucking know. Maybe white girls and maybe blonde white girls like guys like me. Maybe, or at least I'm closer to whatever, or I'm different than the last nigger they were with. I don't fucking know. I don't know the ins and outs of it, but my point is, they're not special to me, and I don't fetishize them. Um, the guys that I spoke with here, they are, like, on some shit where, like, they're on this, like, oh, if I could just have a blonde girl, if I could just, they have these features they don't have here, and I, I'm just, like, uh, just, like, my eyes are squinting now. It's, like, I'm kind of, like, what's this nigga talking about? Like, I, I live in America. There's, like, it's, like, fucking white people land. Like, I, my nigga, you could, like, I could go outside and throw my phone into the air. And it would probably hit a blonde white girl randomly just because it's like fucking everywhere. I, I, I don't get it. So, but in a country here where that's like an uncommon sight or whatever, I mean, guys here are literally catcalling blonde girls down the street like nobody's business. You know, um, most of the girls here in Colombia, they are dying their hair blonde, you know, kind of like actually my hair, my hairdresser lady, um, she, I think she tried to color my shit blonde on the tips because I was like getting it like uh from being in the hot tub for so long, my shit actually was getting bleached anyway, so she fucking did it, but it turned kind of brown, I don't fucking know, but anyway, it's, uh, it's like, uh, in this particular country, maybe other countries too, it seems like, uh, the blonde white woman is at the pinnacle of, uh, desirability, and, um, not for me, for these motherfuckers here, is what it is, right? But that's not a good thing because these guys, they're just like bending over backwards to just try to get these girls' attention and this and that. They're sucking up to them. They're they're not being genuine. And I think that the girls can sense that. And uh, this is what I mean about the topic, get in where you fit in. These guys would be much better off going somewhere where they were just more socially accepted and the odds were in their favor. You understand what I'm saying? Like, if you look at one of my older shows, I did a show called, like, Black in Philippines, Black in Thailand, Black here, Black this. It's always something, like, for YouTube views and for YouTube subscribers, you got to put, like, the racist black angle. It's the black man's point of view shit. But um, I, I, I illustrated that I, ha I had difficulty just getting around in, like, the Philippines and Indonesia in particularly, where there are, like, almost no black people. And uh, you just, like... They're just like nigger go home, like for real. They don't they they don't treat me well there. I'm not well received there. So it would be foolish for me to go back into that society where I'm not welcomed. You understand what I'm saying? Like you, you you're fighting an uphill battle against gravity when you don't have to. You know, and why would you do that to yourself? I mean, like your life is short. I said it before. You got thirty thousand days to live if you live to age eighty two. So why would you burn up your days on a on extra hard difficulty video game. Why don't you just go somewhere where you're accepted or whatever, or go where is what it is. And if you can't find this particular person or this type of phenotype of people that you like in large numbers where you are, uh, you might have to go. You might have to go to another fucking continent, another country. But if that's what it takes, whatever your happiness means to you, I mean, you should go and do it, you know? Hey, some people import cars from Germany to drive in America. European delivery program, they called it at the Mercedes dealership, <laughs> you know, so it's like, you know, cry me a fucking river. If you don't want to go do the legwork and get on the plane and go over somewhere where you're actually wanted, or at least uh, not like the most downtrodden motherfucker in society on the uh, on the totem pole, no pun intended, Indian girls, but it's like, uh, what, what the fuck are you thinking, man? You cannot... <sighs> You cannot reprogram an entire society or an entire culture, race, or religion to like just you, you know? You just can't do it. Unless you're like motherfucking Michael Jackson or some shit like that, I don't think it's going to happen. So why would you... 
Why would you try to force yourself where you're not wanted? Why would you want to try to fit a round ball into a square hole when you know the shit just ain't, it wasn't designed to go there? You know, just go, you know, I'll put it to you this way. Okay, if you're a white guy, if you're a white male, um, you should definitely go to the Philippines because you're like fucking God there. You're the closest thing to Jesus fucking Christ to these people. So if you're white, go to the Philippines, they'll love you. If you're Jewish, go to the Philippines, they'll love you. If you're black, stay the fuck out of there. I can much say the same thing about Colombia here. There are black people in Colombia here. Um, they're mostly doing the the menial, shitty, lower social status type of jobs here. I see them being the, uh, uh, the fucking you know street sweeper guy, security guard, laundry guy. Uh, I don't fucking know the trash guy. I I I, I don't. I don't feel like that black people have a very positive self-image here in um, Colombia. And since my skin is dark, brown, black, I'm probably in that same category. You know, so fuck it. It is what it is. I'm <laughs> you don't have to like me, motherfuckers. Don't worry. I'll be up on a plane soon. El avión. So it is what it is. You got I'm I'm smart enough. <laughs> I'm smart enough to, to, to take a hint if I'm like not, uh, if I'm not welcomed somewhere or if I'm not uh, wanted or desired somewhere other than to exploit, you know, meaninglessly or viciously or whatever you want to call it. Um, I don't need to be in a society like that. And I feel the same way about America, actually, about the United States and many other and many parts of it and many other countries I've gone to. So you just basically got to go shop around. OK, find out where you have the best credit. Um, some of these guys I talked to, these uh, Spanish Latin guys or whatever, they don't know this. But I mean, uh, when I've, looked, I've been to Singapore a couple of times here and a lot of the Singapore girls, the Chinese Malays or whatever, they tell me they love Latin guys because there are none there. So, you know, these niggas should go there, you know, and I should go where I'm wanted. Maybe I should go to fucking France or Italy or just, you know, I haven't explored Europe yet is why I say this, but I'm just like. Yeah, man, maybe I'll go back to fucking Canada. I'll go back to here. I'll go back to there. I'll go back to the Caribbean. I'll go to fucking Africa. I'll go to fucking Antarctica if I get a good enough coat. If they'll let me. <laughs> but it's like, yeah, man, uh, do what you... In life, you will get the most mileage if you go and explore like Dora and go find out for yourself where you are the best accepted or where you're the best treated. That's really the bottom line. Go where you're treated the best. And it's probably not your home country or your homeland. I can almost guarantee it. You know, if there are a lot of motherfuckers that look like you where you live, you're probably not very special. You know, it's, it's, it's like the concept of me, me growing up in school or, you know, OK, let's say let's say you're, you're let's say you're a black kid, such as me or whatever, growing up or whatever. Uh, often, if you t if you took the more like accelerated or advanced classes, math, English, science, and shit like that, uh, I'd always be like, I'd say, oh man, I'm the only black guy in this class. I'm the only black guy here. I'm the only black guy on this team. Or I'm the only sort of fuck what. Every <laughs> there's always one black dude fucking everywhere. No matter what, I'm sure you could go to the fucking moon and you could find one there. So it's like, it's okay to be that one black guy. It's all right. I'm cool with that. I'm used. I'm used to it all my life or whatever. So I'll be that nigga that goes to explore. Okay. If you want more mileage out of life, maybe you got to do the same. Maybe you got to learn a new language. Maybe you got to go travel and relearn and recondition your brain to accept other cultures and religions and this and that and abandon all that old shit that you might have, um, you know, been indoctrinated with growing up or whatever. So that's my lesson there. Get in where you fit in. Look me up, by the way. Look up my travels. Look up my movies. Buy my movies. I want your money, honey, on that other shit. And, uh, you know, check me out and you'll see what I'm talking about. Yeah. But in the meantime, that doesn't mean that you have to settle. If you settle where you're at in your personal area code, zip code, postal code, depending on your country or whatever, I think that you probably won't be happy because it's not good to go through life living with a partner that doesn't appreciate you or value you or feel that you're special or whatever. I think it's, I think special treatment is a wonderful thing. You know, I, I like, I like being the fucking exotic guy, the motherfucking black man walking in the snowstorm that people point at. So the fuck what? 
it's me, hello. You know what I'm saying? I'd rather be that than just a regular motherfucking anonymous nigger in the fucking uh, the South or in the West Coast or something that somebody that doesn't nobody give a fuck about. You know, mm-hmm. you, you, as, especially as a guy, I mean, I'm, I'm probably more so important to your girl because, you know, you probably want to have kids at some point and this, that and the other. It's, uh, you know, the clock is ticking. The clock's ticking for all of us, actually. You know, all of our lives are finite. But it's like, why would you settle for whatever? Wouldn't you much rather just go and get what you want, even if it requires more work? As Rihanna says, work, 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 work. Ain't nothing wrong with work. Work is, uh, it's going to be some work. If you put in the legwork, if you get the passport and put in the work and travel and learn and do things that other people are not willing to do, you will be justly rewarded. You, your brain will be expanded. Your social network will be composed of people that actually give a fuck about you. you you'll have people that share your passions, interests, and hobbies. And as far as all the other motherfuckers, you can just jettison them. I mean, there, there's no point in keeping contact with people who are like going like contrary to your life plan and path. And that's a really hard pill to swallow because it's mostly your family and friends you grew up with and knew like most of your life or whatever. So, yeah, man, it's like motherfuckers aren't with the program or if they don't think that you're special or cool enough or valuable enough. That's the key word. If they don't find value in you. If they don't reciprocate with you, if they don't, uh, they don't fucking care, just jettison them, man. Exit them. Delete. You know, with the Thai accent, as the girl says on the phone. Oh, no like? Delete. 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 Don't be afraid to delete, niggas. Don't worry. You're making room for the new people, you know, because your brain can only handle so many motherfucking people's shit and conversations at a time. So it's like, yeah, yeah. It's, it's kind of difficult at first. It's kind of harsh at first because it's uh, whatever, but you do what you're going to do. Make your life easier. It's just my tip how to make your life easier. Get rid of all the problematic motherfuckers that are causing you drama and brain drain and just sucking you down, holding you down, putting you down and not helping you advance. Don't give a fuck about you or your interests or your goals or your passions or whatever. Oh, man, she did. That's how you put life on easy mode. Find people that are on the same path as you, and if you can't find them, just go on your path and they'll find you. It's that simple. And go where you're liked. Go where you got good credit, nigga. That's what I do. Why would you want to go somewhere where you have like a poor credit score for life? Social credit store. I mean, it's actually a real thing in China, actually, a social credit score. I don't know what it's officially called. I have to look it up. But yeah, man, that's, uh, that's some shit. So yeah, um, I, I hope that these uh, these one or two year old headphones, you guys can hear me a little better with the mic on this than me just yelling to the computer. So um, this, this has been another episode of The Shemmy Show. Thank you for watching. I see I'm at the 17 minute mark or whatever, but uh, so what? Thanks for listening. I like talking to myself. This is part of my process of educating and listening to myself talk. So yeah, I think I covered most of the topics on this, what I wanted to talk about. The... Uh, Yeah, man, just valuing yourself, getting in where you fit in, and go where you're the best accepted. I'll say it again. Go where you are the best accepted. It's probably not your home, or it's not where you grew up around, most likely. If you are, you're a lucky motherfucker. But, I mean, go where you have the most value or the most marketplace value, as people say. Otherwise, you're just fucking yourself, (laughs) and you'll be the one fucking yourself because you won't have nobody that gives a fuck about you. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I actually, I'm speaking since I'm Shemmy, right? The Shemmy show. I, I haven't, uh, I actually haven't dated much here. I fucked around a little bit or whatever, but I realized that, uh, Colombian girls, like I said earlier, they don't really like black guys. They, they prefer a white man or a blonde, blonde guy or some, some shit that I'm not. So it would be foolish for me to even waste my time talking to them or even patronize them or spend money or this or that or the other with people that don't like you and who probably never will like you, or who will always view me as like a quote-unquote dirty nigger, quote unquote, you know, or whatever, or negro, negrito, or whatever. And not everybody thinks like this, by the way. I'm not saying that all Colombians are on this colorist, racist shit, you know, because they're not. I'm sure they're not. But I mean, you know, <laughs> I speak perfect Spanish, by the way, so it's like, 
I know what's going on, but it's like, I can tell when I walk down the street here, no matter how well dressed I am, no matter how, whatever, I'm still seeing, you know, women grab their purses. They look, they look afraid of me. They don't, or they don't acknowledge me. They, they fasten their eyeballs to the goddamn curb, like they're in pocket and shit. And it's like, Hey, they going to do what they do. I can't change their mind. I can't reprogram their brain. And, uh, I'm not interested either. I'm not equally as offended by them and, uh, them and their fajas, you know, once the fat plops out, <laughs> that's, that's I'm just fucking with him. But it's just like, yeah, man, I, I, I go where I want to go. At least this was, a, this was an affordable trip, an affordable destination. And uh, certain parts of the, the country are actually pretty all right. It, it's a good place to go. Just I would say if you're me, if you're black or brown or whatever, I, I wouldn't go here uh, to like try to hook up with chicks, quote unquote, because you might be disappointed. And as they say, YMMV, is that correct? YMMV, your mileage may vary. Okay, so this is what it is. I'm just giving you a hey, man. Doesn't matter if you got money. Doesn't matter if you got motherfucking uh, six six pack abs. Doesn't matter if you're fit. Doesn't matter if you, <laughs> my nigga, if your skin is black here. It, it's like almost. <laughs> To most people, it don't matter. You, you almost have to do like an extra, 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 extra bit of convincing or extra bit of like, you know, why would you want to do that? Why, why would you want to go somewhere where you have to prove yourself beyond this or work extra, extra, extra harder to go and date girl A, B, C, D? I mean, what the fuck? I mean, once you realize that girls are basically just guys, fucking niggers with tits, I mean... They're, they're just, it's, it's girls. I look at girls as like, they're just human beings, just like me with titties. In some cases, I actually prefer girls with small tits actually, because they can run faster. But it's, but it's like, uh, yeah, man. Um, a lot of, a lot of the guys that I'm talking to, man, they're telling me this shit about this. Oh, this, this blonde girl they saw or some girl they're fucking fantasizing or talking up or whatever. And I'm just like, it's just a girl, dude. It's, you know, she her pussy stinks too if she doesn't wash it. There's dirt behind her ears. She's got bills. She's got problems. She's out of toilet paper right now. Her phone bills do. Her this, that, and the other. She needs to go to the cosmetics aisle again. She needs more toiletries. She's probably got a hundred times more problems than you do, man. And the guys don't really see this shit. They don't see the whole. They don't see the whole construction process of girls, and that's that's interesting to me. You know, um, again, as, as as a guy, there's fucking like models models around all the time as I'm shooting videos or whatever. I have the luxury of watching girls do their makeup sometimes and just go from pajama to fabulous in 30 minutes. And I'm telling you guys, it's just it's only fucking cotton swabs, a little bit of makeup, a little bit of bondo, <laughs> like you're just painting a bumper on a car, or whatever, and. Uh, that you put that shit in their eyes, you niggas go crazy. And I'm like, wow, but you should have seen her like an hour ago, dude. She looked just like you. <laughs> yeah. So I, I have the luxury of seeing the magician show. You know, I've, like I say, I've been married. I've cohabitated with women. They, they fart, they stink. They're human. They make mistakes quite often. They, you know, it's kind of like, and I'm not all girls are like this, but not enough of them are. I mean, it, it, it is, this is a whole nother topic or whatever I'm tangenting off onto here, but like, I'm not, I'm not easily, I'm not easily deceived by the, by the whole bathroom routine that girls do to, uh, like hypnotize men. It just doesn't work on me. That's why I'm just so neutral all the fucking time. And maybe that's the key. I don't know. It could, it could be maybe, maybe, I mean, some, if, if there were 10 naked girls walking behind me right now, it wouldn't matter. My dick wouldn't get hard because I know they're not interested in me. They're just here. They're just, they're just, you know, whatever. Like I say, fucking dudes with tits, whatever. Actually, by the way, if you ever go to Thailand and just fucking look at all the goddamn lady boys walking around there, you'll see to yourself like, wow, that's a man. That's a man with a dress on with this, that, and that, and that. But it looks just like the real girl over there to within 80% accuracy or whatever, minus the height and the big ass hands and shit. So <laughs> just, there's some funny motherfuckers. I'm, I'm just, it is what it is, you know, but I'm just saying it, it's amazing what motherfucking makeup, cosmetics, toiletries, and clothes will do to a human being. 
You know what I'm saying? It's that's not what makes a person. It's not what makes a lady to me. It, 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 studying, it, it's just you. Le- you learn what makes a girl a girl. You know, or what, or what makes a girl feminine, and what makes them what they are, or whatever. And I'm just, I'm just one of those niggas that says, I'm, I'm hard to trick. I'm a trick that's hard to trick. Okay. I wouldn't even. Okay, yeah, sir, uh, sir. I'm not a pimp. I'm a trick, right? But it's like, what would you call me? I mean, as a guy, as a guy, here's a good, good question, a good, good brain bender for you here. As a guy that, uh, that shoots videos, adult videos or whatever with models and shit, it's like. Um, if I pay a girl to make a movie, am I tricking? If the movie makes me money and pays me back, can't sell it till you buy it? I don't know. Maybe I'm just like a super trick. I'm definitely not a pimp, am I? Because that would mean that I'm, you know what I'm saying? So I'm just a trick ass nigga, but at least I'm tricking and I'm accumulating with my fornication. So <laughs> that is the bottom line, my friend. And that's how I roll. Fuck it. You know, this is a, coming from the mouth of Ethiopian slash black fucking uh, whatever. When they say Ethiopians are Semitic people, that, that's the Semite in me coming out. <laughs> no fornication without accumulation. <laughs> Fuck, man. All right, anyway, I'm dragging this shit on longer than I need to. Thank you for watching The Shemmy Show. Peace and hair grease. Buy my movies. I want your money. Look me up on YouTube. Follow me on Twitter, Shemmy Triple X, Instagram, link in the description. Shemelise McBev, my full government name. Thanks for watching me. Thanks for following me and stalking me. OJJDPICAC in Indian Country and other uh, federal agencies. I'm here. Buy my movies. There's some great shit coming out real soon, guys. Just for you. Just for you. I got some nice, 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 nice movies that you guys have inspired. So thank you so much for the inspiration. Dropping bombs like Hiroshima on you niggas. <laughs> Detonation code activated. Peace out. Ah.